Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. I've met many examples over the years of how the Bible can carry different messages, can carry different uh, immediacy. And uh, very often this helps Westerners, it certainly helps me to understand the Bible and frankly to see the Bible in ways that I've never imagined. For example, for 2,000 years the church has known the parable of the day laborers. Um, the, the rich man pays the day laborers at different hours of the day. Only to the best of my knowledge, in the 1990s, did a Nigerian theologian go out and ask the real experts for their opinion on this, namely the day laborers, and how they interpreted it. One, uh, one example um, I found, um, there is a psalm which most of you will probably know, and perhaps I'm telling you something which is very familiar, but bear with me. This was something of a revelation for me. There's a short psalm called Psalm 126. And this includes the famous line about he who goes forth weeping to sow the seed will bring the sheaves home again in joy. Now that's used uh, as a resurrection verse. It's used in many uh, funeral services. Why does the person go forth weeping? I was asking some uh, Nigerians um, what were the parts of the Bible that you know, particularly struck them, resonated, them, resonated with them, and they said, oh, well, and they clearly became moved. That psalm, that psalm carries such a message. Well, why? What's, why? Well, obviously, they said. Always beware people who tell you it's obvious. Obviously, they said. It was a terrible year of famine. They had, they had no food in this year. All they had left was the seed corn. And they had a choice in that year, which is they could either sow the seed or use it to feed the children. And if they fed the children, they'd have nothing the following year. So they had to take the food away from the children to go and sow it in weeping so the following year you would bring the sheaves home in, uh, in celebration. And that's a, uh, that's a very common event around the year. I mean, there certainly are parts of the world where at, uh, uh, during particular times, if you greet somebody, you'll say, hello, how are you? And the response is, um, oh, good to meet you, my children are hungry. And that's the conventional uh, greeting. When you read the Bible with, I suppose, with African eyes, with Global South eyes, you realize many things. You realize how much of the Bible is about food. And that may seem um, an, obvious, uh, an obvious statement, but verses which are about food cannot carry the same resonance in a society in North America with the most important food-related uh, story of the last few years is an alleged obesity uh, epidemic. Um, imagine reading the Magnificat, something I will come back to um, in a society in which there is an ultimate vision of how, what will this new order look like. It will be so wonderful that the rich will be sent empty away and the poor will have enough to eat. What does the messianic age look like? It is a time when everyone will have enough to eat. There will be a great banquet. It's a very material vision.